everyone. Welcome back. We're here with Morgan Hayward from Illuminate Theater. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for being here. Um, just to start, why don't we um, introduce Illuminate and what it does as like a theater company for the community if for those who aren't already familiar. Yeah. Um, so I started Illuminate a year ago and the mission has always been to shine light on actors who have been left in the dark, specifically actors of color in the capital region, because I feel like there isn't necessarily opportunities or a platform for actors of color to not only perform, but to perform pieces that they feel like are relatable and relevant to their lives. So I started a, a year ago with really just the intention to do theater with my friends and I was like I'm just gonna do it one time it'll be cool and then that'll be it um, but people enjoyed it um, and it's always been important to me to cultivate a theater that is representative of all of the people in the audience or all of the people in the community where we're creating it so that's why I started it yeah and what was uh, sort of your venture into the world of theater on your own? It's actually interesting. I feel like I've was kind of born to be an actress or to at least be involved in creating theater because I never did anything consistently as a kid. I did a couple shows here and there. I auditioned for things, but I wasn't like the theater kid in high school or anything like that. Um, but I just always knew that I wanted to do it. And in sixth grade, actually, I said that I wanted to start a theater company for inner city kids mm -hmm. that focused on um, giving them the resources that they needed to become actors later on in life and I said that again in 12th grade and so now here we are <laughs> just um, keep saying it. and I just keep <laughs> saying it and it's happening so yeah I kind of just always knew um, I did a lot of sports in high school and then junior year my dad was like okay well what are you gonna do in college because this you know you don't even like sports which I didn't <laughs> like sports at all I hated it so he's like you know what are you gonna do so senior year is when I kind of started to move more into seriously pursuing theater and I did an internship at Russell Sage um, that was based in theater and then after that year there I ended up going to school there and I got my bachelor's in acting from Russell Sage and then graduated um, and trained at Shakespeare and Company in Massachusetts mm. and then I came back to Albany and started Illuminate. So uh, how much of I, obviously, Illuminate addresses a, a real issue for the area in, in finding roles for people of color and, mm -hmm. and, and it, roles that might not be in, in a lot of the shows that return. Or uh, Obviously, there is a, well, every every art scene locally has its a niche you know, that's right. hard to break into. But how did you start identifying that issue? I mean, was it in college? Was it at Russell Sage? Was it at, what, where did you start encountering the idea that there needed to be something more for for folks who aren't, weren't getting the roles that they might want? Mm -hmm. I think it definitely started in college because mm -hmm. I went to school in high school at Albany High where it's super diverse and the theater teacher, uh, Ward Dales, is all about doing provocative theater and theater that is a little bit different and and he, he doesn't... Um, cast biasly or um, cast true to race all the time or you know he just does his right. thing kind of and when I went to Russell Sage one incident actually was what kind of one specific incident but a bunch of other ones um, kind of triggered me I guess is a good word to start this journey um, I had auditioned or we were getting ready to audition for Anne Frank and a lot of students well first of all the the company or the department was primarily white students so that already was an interesting dynamic um so then when the auditions came up everybody was like well you know don't even bother auditioning because all of the characters are um jewish or german so you don't type into anything and so i wasn't going to audition and then my mom was like well why are you typing yourself out of it you know there's a lot of ways as a person and as an actor that you can relate to anne frank's story so make it about that and not about race and i went to my director david baker and i said to him you know i don't want to audition because 
because a lot of students are telling me all these reasons why I shouldn't audition. And he said to me, the one thing that you need to work on is showing up in the room. And I'm going to cast you based on how you show up in the room, not on anything else. And actually, the, the show that we were doing has been been done other places in the world with a black actress playing Anne Frank and he told me that so I was like okay it's gonna be fine so I auditioned I got the part and then after I got the part there was all this backlash from the same students saying that I should have never gotten the part and that there were people in the in the company that looked more like her and they should have gotten cast and that was super discouraging and I was only a sophomore, I think. Wow. So that was really hard to deal with at a young wow. age. And I didn't know how to deal with it. And that was kind of after a bunch of other microaggressions sure. that had already, you know, things were adding up. So that happened. And then my junior year, I applied to go to London. Um, but I also was thinking about my senior year show. And I went to a mentor of mine, Noelle Gentile, who you guys know. Rockstar. Yeah, <laughs> love her. Um, and I kind of told her what was happening. And I told her that I wanted to leave my mark when I did my senior show. And that I wanted to talk about something that um, was important and something that I felt like was an issue at Russell Sage. So we started to kind of talk about how race is dealt with in the theater department there. And then that caused me to start thinking about more how things are dealt with in Albany as a whole. Right. Um, so then from my senior show, which was an ex exploration of my experience at Russell Sage, my experience with race through life, because I'm mixed race, so my mom is white and my, and my father is black. So that was an interesting time growing up too. So that was what my senior show was about and that started conversations with people in the theater community in Albany, which then led to a lot of um, people who are in administrative roles in theater companies in Albany telling me that the reason why theater here is not diverse is because there's not enough um, black professional actors. And I just kind of was like... I'm not buying it, um, but okay. And that's when I set out, I guess, to prove them wrong and to find all of the people that are actors of color in the Capital Region and, and or are professional actors um, of color in the Capital Region. So that was kind of the process and when I started to notice and what I did about it. Wow. So what, I mean... What has it been like to be this <clears throat> beacon and have folks? Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how quickly were you getting a response from folks who wanted to be a part? Oh, immediately. Mm -hmm. Definitely immediately. Um, it's been a growing and learning experience for me because it's forced me to look at things in a, from a different perspective in a lot of different areas. But definitely from the beginning... I set out to look for actors and I ended up finding performers and people who just really craved to be on stage and really craved to tell their story. And then from that, some of those people have become actors. So it's become more of a network than a company in a way because a lot of the people that are performing together are then creating more theater together outside of Illuminate or um getting lessons from each other or finding pieces together, which I never could have imagined that that was going to happen. I just thought I was going to put up a show with a couple people and then that was going to be it. But it's become a lot more about um, camaraderie and a community and a new theater community that hasn't really existed here um, in this way before. And it's interesting, too, to think about when um, someone like you has this creative idea, like, I think this would serve me, but I don't really know what it can do. Mm -hmm. And then to realize how hungry the community <clears throat> was for something yeah. like this must be just so affirming. Like, yeah. what has that been like to, especially you guys celebrated the one year anniversary. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, that was this summer. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, as it continues to build, what has it been like to just see more and more people being fed by mm -hmm. Illuminate? Um, it's definitely humbling and it definitely feels like a blessing and I feel 
I feel really lucky to be able to provide this type of platform. Um, it's a bit overwhelming because now I feel like I have a responsibility right. to do more. Um, and it's forced me to think more critically about the structure of theater in general. Um, because a lot of people have been saying to me, you know, well, this is amazing. So like you need to become a non for profit or you need to incorporate or you need to do this and do this. And I've been really slow to jump into a non for profit or that type of structure because I believe that part of the issue stems from the fact that a lot of theater companies are stuck in that um, model and aren't focusing on the artists and aren't focusing on the artist stories or the artist art. Mm -hmm. So it, it started as something for me to just share my stories and help other people share my stories, but or share their stories, sorry. Right. <laughs> but now it's kind of becoming more of a way to revolutionize the theater model or create a new wow. one in a sense. Um, so yeah, I think that answers your question. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Are there any significant like lessons that you've learned along the way that have really stuck with you in this process like of mm -hmm. learning how to revolutionize the way that theater is done, essentially? Um, I think have patience. Uh, that's one thing, because I was starting to feel really self-conscious about not taking the next step, because all these people were, like, pushing yeah. me, like, you need to do something, you need to do something, you need to do something. And I just felt in my gut, I didn't know what it was that I needed to do, but I knew that that wasn't what I needed to do. Right. So I just um, took time and was patient to figure it out. So that was one lesson that I learned. But also... Um, to keep digging and learning and looking because I actually found an article that was able to say like everything that I wanted to say about the business model of theater and how it's changing. And um, it gave me examples of different ones. And so I was able to pick from that to kind of figure out how I want mine to be. Um, so those are two lessons that I learned. And also, I mean, just about the general structure of a theater because I had some understanding from school mm -hmm. but not necessarily a full understanding of the business aspect and everything that goes into creating a non-for-profit absolutely just a lot yeah <laughs> definitely mm -hmm. um yeah it's it's that thing of like how do you separate art and then like profiting off right. of art and it, because you kind of need both of them to survive mm -hmm. um yeah that's really difficult yeah <laughs> um for those who aren't familiar with sort of the typical structure of theater mm. that we're talking about um can you sort of walk through that and talk about um how illuminate is different or similar mm -hmm. so right now we're in the process of creating our model so it's ever changing mm -hmm. so it's, um i'll talk about how i would like for it sure, to be yeah. uh, typically the non-for-profit theater and i have a, just some understand a basic understanding right. of it but typically the structure is that there's a board who basically controls the money and the donations and how money is made and all of that. And then under that would be administrat administration. So that's your artistic director, your assistant artistic director, all the people that make decisions. Right. And then under that, kind of, this is like a little bit of a jump, would technically be the artists or the art. Um, and for me, I'm trying to eliminate the board and the administration and just focus on the artists and a lot of the key artists in my company like Angelique Powell, um, Zoe McLean and a few other people have a lot of background in administrative work and have a lot of a vast understanding of how a theater operates and how to make money and um, all of that stuff. So I'm trying to employ their administrative skills at the same time that I'm employing their artistic skills and develop a company that is centered around the art that all of us want to create and so that we can make money off of our art and then we'll operate as a business by using the skills that each of us has um, but still focusing on mainly ourselves as artists rather than the business aspect of it because I feel like when it becomes all about how you can make money then we get Broadway, which is just a whole bunch of musicals that like anybody could go and see, which is great, but I'm more in the business of creating art that speaks to the soul 
soul and that is um, transformative. And a lot of times that's hard when all you're focused on is money. Right. Because those aren't always the shows that sell. So Yeah. Is there, I mean, is there a good way for folks who uh, are very interested in what you do? Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, obviously attendance is, is a great way to support theater. But mm-hmm. is there another way at the, the moment for folks to get involved or support you? Um, you know, through crowdfunding or anything like that? I mean, are you just, just tell people to show up? Is that <laughs> um, we haven't started a crowd, crowdfunding campaign at this time, but we're selling t-shirts. <laughs> so the t-shirts are $15. <laughs> um, those can only be purchased at the shows mm-hmm. at this time, but those are available and we do take cash donations at the shows as well. But right now, pretty much everything is at the shows, so you kind of have to come to the show. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, yeah. And just to talk about the shows a little bit about how the structure of them are, because from what I understand mm-hmm. is um, it's all based on a theme, yep. correct? Um, and do each of the actors, are they writing and telling their own stories? And then um, I don't want to like speak for you. <laughs> I, I guess I'm turning this into a question is what's the typical structure of a mm-hmm. show um, based off of a theme? Like, do you, have a part in directing their stories in any way, or are you working on some common, um, I guess, closing mm-hmm. lesson or something? When you spe- talk about like art that speaks to the soul, are you trying to educate or make people think about one specific topic? Um, so when we started, or when I started, it just started, the first theme I just said, it wasn't really even a theme, I just posed a question to the community and asked, um, what do you, what type of theater do you want to perform? Right. So the first group just brought in monologues that they really liked, and I per, I encouraged them to pick pieces by um, playwrights of color. Mm-hmm. After that, because the talk back from that show was such a dialogue, um, after After that, I start to think about more questions that come up when you think about actors of color in the community. So then we started talking about how actors of color are often stereotypes. And so a lot of our themes at the beginning were centralized around that topic of being an actor of color. Um, But then we started to branch out a little bit more and started looking at just society and the world and Spike Lee's show, She's Gotta Have It, came out and she did the street harassment movement. So we took that hashtag and made it into a theme and people brought monologues that they felt like represented that hashtag that was created on the show. So our themes kind of come from all over the place. Originally, it was all about one thing, but now it comes from pop culture, what what the actors want to talk about, things that I think are important all over. And the pieces are curated in a couple ways. Um, I try to provide a couple things. If I think of something, then, you know, when I send out the call, I'll suggest that people look at a certain play. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times the actors go and find their own things that they feel like that are published, that they feel like represent what we're talking about. But that is changing because we're talking about more broad themes now or questions. The themes have kind of turned into questions that we pose to the audience. And because they're so broad, it's hard to find a published play. So people are getting inspired to write their own things. And it's funny because the a lot of people will say like, oh, I'm not a writer. And then they hear the theme and they're like, oh, but I want to talk about this. And right. I'm like, okay, so write something. And then they do. <laughs> and so it's been a combination of the actors writing, me writing, and then pulling published pieces. Wow. And I think part of the structure with our show that I think makes it unique is that we have a talk back afterwards where the audience is able to answer the question that we're posing or also respond about how they feel like we answered the question. And that's been... I think like the most successful part of this entire thing yeah. because it started conversations with people that maybe wouldn't be having these conversations in a safe space where nobody feels attacked and um, we can look at things from a different perspective. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Such an interactive way to present theater that isn't, I mean, a common mm-hmm. thing when you like go to see a show. Yeah. It's like you're going, you sit, you enjoy it and you leave and then maybe you talk about it with your friends afterwards. Mm-hmm. But this is like directly communicating with the people on the stage. Which yeah. Is, um, was that something that you wanted to try right off the bat or 
um, to continue with, or was it something that after the first show you were like, this has to be such a central part of what we do here as a mission? I definitely always wanted to do the talk back from the beginning and not so much to talk about the aesthetic aspects of theater. Or, you know, people always ask the question, how did you memorize all those lines? <laughs> um, not necessarily that stuff, but more the content, because yeah. I think that theater is a huge, um, a huge vehicle for change and it's a huge conversation driver and that's what I'm trying to do with theater just by writing it and performing it so it kind of made sense to do the talk back too and structure it in that way that's awesome Mm -hmm. um so how can people who um want to be involved and be on stage for your shows um Mm -hmm. reach out to illuminate and audition for a show So we're on Facebook and Instagram at Illuminate Theater with an R-E, 518. (laughs) It was wrong until this morning, so Uh we had to change that. Um, (laughs) But yeah, uh, with an R-E on Instagram and Facebook, and our website is on its way up, hopefully by the new year, and that'll also be Illuminate Theater with an (laughs) (laughs) R-E dot com. Um, And people can always email us too at Illuminate Theater at yahoo dot com um, or at contact dot M Elizabeth. That's my email at yahoo dot com. And we hold auditions once a month. So actually we have auditions on Monday. Very cool. If anybody wants to come to those. Where and when? They're at the African American Cultural Center at six o'clock and that's on South Pearl. Right. Mm hmm. Um, And we should say you are going to be a contributing columnist uh, for for us. And I think the insights and, you know, you have are really invaluable. And um, I can, you know, I can think of a million things I'd like to hear from you about now. But um, at the same time, I sort of want to hear, want to read the column. Um, But I am wondering, just finally, sort of, it's only been a year, but have you (coughs) found yourself working with, with actors or you know, even writers who have felt sort of, uh, who have grown more comfortable and been able to find work outside of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, has that, have you started to f- feed more folks into, um, you know, positions outside of Illuminate? Yeah, 100%. Corinne Dyer, actually mm-hmm. poetic. She's a poet. And when she first started Illuminate, it was just um, kind of to challenge herself. And she started out actually at her audition and she said I'm a poet so sorry you know and I was like don't apologize and she performed the first time and it was good but you know every time that we have auditions and rehearsals we're working together we're we're talking about the fundamentals of acting and you know who you're talking to why you're talking to them all of that stuff and to watch her grow from the first day to now was amazing and she's definitely developed as an actor and a performer and she got she went and auditioned for um for colored girls at the barn with oh, Meg yeah. Afonso mm-hmm. and she was cast in that and she was incredible and a lot of actor a lot of people have just auditioned because I asked them to, yeah. and then they find out later that they actually like to perform. Um, Ricey, he's a producer. He performed with us one time because we were asking him to, and he was like, I don't know, I don't know, and he performed, it was really good, and he actually came back two more times after that without us having to beg him. <laughs> <laughs> Just growing that community every time. Mm-hmm. That's so great. Um, well, Thank you so much for coming in today. It was really great. And, uh, yeah, hopefully people will go show up for auditions on Monday. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I expect we'll be keeping people up to date on your events uh, going forward on, on you know, our site. So it's a pleasure. And thank yeah, you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.